Today in Family Time, it's a spot that will keep everyone entertained and offers an opportunity to see animals from all over the globe. Roger Williams Park Zoo is home to more than 100 species. This is where we find one of our own species. Brandon is... Come on, Brandon. <laughs> Oh, well, very nice. I love that. I got to start pre-reading those intros, <laughs> but I love that here in one of my favorite habitats, of course, one of our favorite places, Will, Roger Williams Park Zoo. It doesn't matter, rain or shine, these guys are here, and we are joined by one of our favorite guests, executive director here at the zoo, Dr. Jeremy Goodman. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's always great to be here, and like we, I just said, and we were chatting before we went on, you guys are here no matter what, aren't you? Ready to welcome the visitors. We are. Rain or shine, year-round, we are here for you. And the animals are here for you, and they can't wait for you to come out here. And speaking of them, you know, behind us here, we have the Binturong. So we are learning a little something here today. What do we need to know about these guys? And as my notes indicate, we have Ricky and Poppy behind us. We're not sure if one or both of them will be making a cameo this morning. Yeah, so Binturongs are one of the coolest animals we have here at the zoo. And not pe many people have heard of them. They're also known as a bear cat, but they're not really related to cats or bears. They, they have a tail like a monkey that can actually wrap around branches. So... Um, really unusual animals. Now we're seeing one of them right there. Uh, who is that right there? So that is Ricky. Uh, he's our male, and uh, he's been with us for a number of years, and uh, we have a breeding pair. They are vulnerable uh, due to habitat destruction, poaching, and, uh, and whatnot. So um, they're part of a, a national breeding program, and uh, we're hoping for baby bitterongs to come. Oh, he's coming closer. Now, we, we thought maybe he had a little bit of stage fright, but he has emerged. He has returned. And you were saying your animals here are so very smart. A lot of them have been taking shelter, taking cover, because they don't want to get wet, do they? That's right. In, in the rain, extreme heat. Uh, our animals have air conditioning. Our animals have, uh, are always have access to cover. So, um, you know, it's their choice whether they want to be inside or outside. We're very lucky right now that he's uh, putting on a show for us and, uh, you know, foraging for some of his uh, breakfast right now. But uh, our animals always have the choices for whatever makes them happiest. And there he goes right down into the wine cellar, I believe. But uh, these guys indigenous to Southeast Asia? That's correct. They are from Southeast Asia. Uh, they live up in the trees, and they have a really cool adaptation where their back feet can actually rotate um, so that they can uh, climb trees uh, down backwards. And uh, really fascinating creatures. Another unusual thing is that they smell like buttered popcorn. And, uh, you know, it's to basically keep away other males and to attract females, but a uh, very unusual smell for, for a bitterong, for an animal. Putting us in the movie mood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, the female I actually was reading on my cheat notes here, the dominant of the sexes when it comes to binturongs, correct? Uh, they, they certainly can be, and I think uh, our female uh, poppy is, uh, you know, rules the roost here as well. Which is always so very fascinating to me. And uh, for you, I mean, it's a never-ending learning experience, not only for you guys that work here, but also for the people that come out. There's so much to see and do here, isn't there? There is. Uh, every time I go out on zoo grounds, I try to learn something new, and uh, I always see the animals doing something different. So uh, just keep on coming out and uh, enjoying a visit here and, and keep learning. Well, that's what we will do throughout the morning. Thank you very much, as always. Dr. Jeremy Goodman joining us right here today. We're going to have much more from the zoo, you guys, as the morning rolls on. Yes, your favorite of the species, whatever Will called me <laughs> at the beginning, will be here throughout the hour, you guys. For now, back to you. This morning in family time, we are taking you behind the scenes at Roger Williams Park Zoo. You can find animals from all over the world right in Providence, and it's the perfect spot to bring the family. Brendan is quite the animal himself. Uh, he is live this morning. What are you doing now, bud? Please don't feed the television show host. The Kirby requires silence at all times, especially when he's having his meals. Don't disturb him. That's right, Michaela. We are back live here at Roger Williams Park Zoo, one of our favorite places, and we have Dr. Jeremy Goodman with us here once again. And yes, we are here meeting the red pandas. This is one of them right here. Who do we have, Dr. Goodman? So this is Shaylee. She's our female. And uh, we have Rusty, who's our male, who's up on the climbing structure right now. And she is very curious. Red pandas are very curious animals. And she's and checking your new sense. Is and she uh, about to go to the bathroom on me? claiming you as hers right now. This is the first time a female has ever claimed to me. But I guess I should take what I can get. Oh, that's very nice. This is why I switched into my older Chuck Taylors. But this is an experience that, uh, well, I would imagine not everyone gets to have here at the zoo. 
<laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> this is a special treat to be in here with our red pandas, and uh, they are endangered animals. And as cute as they are, they are uh, being threatened in, the, in their native habitats of uh, Nepal and the Himalayas, and uh, mostly due to habitat destruction. But um, they're part of our uh, international breeding program here at the zoo, and uh, um, you know we're doing our efforts to uh, to make sure that they're around for many generations to come. Absolutely, preserving and conserving. That's really what it's all about. Now, now anyone tuning in right now might be thinking, okay, well, they are awfully close. You know, Brendan and Dr. Goodman are right in there with them. I was a little concerned when you told me that we were going to be right here, but they've been very docile. They've been very friendly and really welcoming us into their habitat here. Uh, they are, but they are carnivores as well. Um, they do have uh, teeth, and just like any animal, they, they know how to use them. But uh, uh, they're very interesting because they're actually one of the only vegetarian carnivores. Uh, they eat bamboo, um, and here at the zoo, they also eat their panda biscuits. Um, they will occasionally eat other things as well, but uh, it's predominantly bamboo, and that's why they're a panda. And those long tails there, they actually serve a purpose. You know, wrapping around them as winter approaches. It's not right around the corner, but it is always forth forthcoming. The tail actually serves a, a purpose for them, doesn't it? That's true. They use it for balance and they use it uh, to stay warm as well. They'll, they'll wrap it around their face and nose uh, to stay warm in, in the uh, cold winters of Asia. I usually use my roadshow snuggy, but uh, enough about me. And lots of things are a great thing. I can't take my eyes off of them. Always happening right here at the zoo. Memberships are available at all times as well, aren't they? They are, and they're the best deal in town. A full year of admission, uh, discounts to jack o' lantern, spectacular, and, and the gift shop and whatnot. So memberships are always a great deal. Uh, and we do have Jack Lantern Spectators right around the corner as well. We're getting ready for it as we speak. As we were making our way over here, sort of meandering about, we saw the pumpkins in preparation. Hard to believe it's back again almost. It is, but that's a, a year-round endeavor, and uh, we're, we're going to have the best show ever this year. So come on out and make sure you see the pandas and, and the pumpkins. These red pandas are ready for their close-ups. Look at this. They are photo-ready. They are absolutely beautiful, very cute. And as, of course, you just saw... The female marked her territory right here on Brendan Kirby. What a day to tune in, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Goodman, thanks as always. My pleasure. Great to see you. We're going to have much more from Roger Williams Park Zoo as the morning rolls on. What other animals will pee on me? Stay tuned. Back to you. <laughs> Hey, good morning, guys. We're having a blast here, checking this great place out. We've been here many times, and it feels like every time we show up to Roger Williams Park Zoo, we find a new area to explore, we learn something new, and we just have an absolute blast, which is why all of you guys need to come out there. Here, rain or shine, lots of different things to see, including the big buildup. The moment has arrived, and Andrea Stein joins me right now. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning. And we have been teasing our next <laughs> guest for roughly 24 hours. The moment has almost arrived for Stanley the skunk to make his roadshow appearance. What do we need to know about this guy? Uh, so Stanley is about two years old. He's one of our ambassador animals. So he's an animal that goes out into schools, into the community, um, and helps uh, us teach kids and adults of all ages. Uh, now this today is not his television debut. He no. is, uh, he's been on before, which is why he's yeah. still hiding in his trailer. Should <laughs> yeah. we open it up for him? We can, yep. So when he comes out, we have some food in this puzzle theater for him. Um, so hopefully he's going to use his nose, which is one of his best senses, to uh, locate and find that food. And then you'll notice he uses his um, claws or his nails like he would in the wild to forage for that food a little bit. So sometimes it takes him a little while. Like a true showman, he's yeah. making, making us wait for him. Let's see if I can <laughs> entice him out a little bit. He's so cute. Now, the skunk, as you were telling us earlier, one of the most misunderstood animals, because I'm sure a lot of people watching right now, oh, my God, Brendan is yep, going to... And I'm not, because yeah. tell the audience why. Um, so uh, animals in um, zoos and aquariums and captive situations, they get their uh, scent glands removed. So when he was very young, he had that removed. Um, so he still has kind of a musky odor, but he can't spray you at all. And Stanley is a no-touch, you were telling me, correct? Yeah, um, he just is not an animal that enjoys being touched or cuddled in any way, um, but he... You and I have that in common. <laughs> he loves to come out. He loves meeting people. Uh, he's a great ambassador, and some animals enjoy being touched, like our dogs or cats. Some don't. So. Sure, and they really are very calm. Uh, skunks very are docile. traditionally very docile, very peaceful animals, aren't they? Absolutely, yep. Yeah, they don't want to spray you. So it's the last defense. Defense um, mechanism. It's a defense mechanism, yep. So they don't want to have to do that. It takes a lot of energy. 
So, yeah. That's why, you know, obviously we have Stanley here with us right here this morning. We're watching him go to work and do his thing, but we don't want to urge people watching, you know, if they see skunks in their yard, that doesn't mean just because we've become friends with Stanley that they should be going out and befriending the neighborhood skunks. Yes, uh, we've been working with Stanley since he was a baby, so he's very used to being around us and people, uh, but you don't want to do that with your neighborhood skunk. If you do ever encounter one, you just want to quietly, slowly back away. Just go your uh, own way. approach them. Like I like to do with my neighbors. <laughs> just go your own way. And you alluded to at the top of the segment here, the fact that, you know, Stanley really serves as a great educational vehicle. You can use him for the kids to really learn something. And for you, I'd imagine that must be one of the great joys of your job, education. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So um, I am really passionate about our natural world and being able to share that with kids and having animals to help do that is uh, creates these profound experiences for kids and adults um, and really allows them to make a connection. How long have you worked at the zoo? Uh, about eight years. And what drew you to this line of work? It seems just endlessly compelling to me. Yeah, um, I had always, I grew up at the zoo. This is my local zoo. I always loved animals and the outdoors and nature. Um, I started as a school teacher and um, decided to come here because I could still educate, but I could teach and teach what I'm passionate about. And uh, it's been a great experience. So. Well, you're doing a great job, Andrew. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. A great pleasure to have you join us. And thanks, Stanley. I'll let him continue to do his <laughs> thing. He's too cool for the camera. He's a TV vet, you guys. What's cooler than that? We want to thank our friends here at Roger Williams Park Zoo for a great morning. You guys will want to come out, meet Stanley, meet some of the, the red pandas we met earlier. Lots of fun things are always happening here. It's a great place, as always. Check out Roger Williams Park Zoo. For now, back to you.